Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. A week or so ago, I did a video on SilverFX Pro, which is part of the Nick collection. In that video, I mentioned that SilverFX Pro is my favorite application for black and white editing. A few days after that video posted, I received an email from someone saying, you know, I'm a bit surprised since you do so many videos on On One Photo Raw that On One FX isn't your favorite application for black and white editing. Why is that? Well, I really don't have a good reason other than to say I'm old. You know how when some people get old, they're reluctant to change, they don't really want to try anything new? Well, I've mentioned before that the very first plugin I ever purchased for Lightroom was the Nick Collection. So I've been using SilverFX Pro for around 15 years, and I've never really wanted to try anything else. But that email gave me the idea, maybe I should try on one effects for my black and white editing. And you know what? It's awesome. And in my opinion, it probably edges out Silver Effects Pro. The main reason why I feel that way is that on one effects has AI masking. And with AI masking, it's super easy to select a specific element in a scene and apply a filter to it. Silver Effects Pro does not have any AI at all. It does have control points. They are effective, but they're not as effective as AI masks. So in today's video, I want to show you how to use on one effects for your black and white editing. And in today's video, we're going to be using it as a plugin in Lightroom. Now, I think most of us would probably do some editing in Lightroom to begin with. Uh, for example, I have this unedited raw file. And I just want to point out on the far left of the screen, there's this little boat poking into the scene. I'm going to crop that away and I'm just making a point uh, because I want to show you something in a moment. So I'm going to just grab this top left handle and just pull in so I'm cropping away that boat. So I'm going to close down the crop tool. I'm going to open up the basic panel and I'm just going to do some tone editing. I'm going to bring highlights down, open up shadows. I'm going to get a white point. I'm going to hold in the option key on my Mac, Alt key on a PC. Click on the white slider. I'll get this entirely black screen. Move this to the right till I see some color come through. It means I'm blowing out the highlights in those areas. Just going to back it off because I don't want to blow out the highlights. So I'll just back it off to all that color dissipates. Similarly for the black slider, holding that alt option key, click on the black slider. This time I get almost an entirely white screen. I'll pull this to the left and I'll see some more color come through. That means I'm crushing the shadows in those areas. I don't mind crushing the shadows a little bit. So that's all the editing I'm going to do in Lightroom. Now I'm ready to send it into On One Effects. Now there's two different ways you could purchase On One Effects. You could purchase it all by itself. If you purchase it all by itself, it will not work as a standalone app, but it will work as a plugin in Lightroom and Photoshop. Another way you could purchase it is you could purchase the entire On One Photo Raw suite. It's On One Photo Raw 2024 Max. You have to purchase the Max version. If you purchase the Max version, it will include plugins for Lightroom and Photoshop. Now, if you purchase it all by itself, the Nick Collection, or the, I'm sorry, the on one effects all by itself. There's two different ways to send an image from Lightroom to on one effects. One of those ways is just to go up to photo, down to edit in, then over and down to on one effects. If you do it this way, you will lose the raw format. You have to send it either as a TIFF, PSD, or JPEG. On one recommends you send it as a PSD. If you've watched any of my videos, you know that I prefer to keep the raw format throughout my workflow. So I wouldn't send it to on one effects this way. Instead, I would use this other method. This other method works for on one effects all by itself or for the entire suite on one photo raw 2024. To use this other method, you would go up to file down to plugin extras and then over and you'll notice there's on one effects because I have the app all by itself. So I could send it this way. And then I have the suite as well on One Photo Raw 2024. It doesn't say Max, but it is the Max version. And I could send it to On One Effects this way as well. I'm just going to use the standalone app, the On One Effects 2024. When I choose either of those two, I'll get this export options dialog box. Here I could send a, a copy with Lightroom adjustments. That's what I want to do because I did some editing here. Or I could just send a copy that won't include the Lightroom adjustments. And since it's a raw file, I can't send the original raw file. Now, for the file format, I have five different options. JPEG, TIFF, and Photoshop. 
Those are the same as if I use the edit in menu that I just showed you. Or I could send it as a DNG. I get to keep my raw format throughout my workflow. And the fifth option is Smart Photo PSD. That's similar to the Photoshop PSD, except this one uses smart objects. And I'll talk about that more in a moment. So I mentioned I like to keep my, the raw format throughout my workflow, so I'm going to use DNG. Also, I like to use the largest color space available. And in this case, it's Photo RGB. I'm going to keep 16-bit depth. You definitely want that, not 8-bit. Bit, and the resolution 300 pixels per inch is fine. I'm just going to click OK. So I will take this image now and it will open it up into on one effects. The reason why I cropped out that little boat on the left is it was an easy way to show you that it actually will not take your edits from Lightroom. It won't see them. So this is the unedited RAW file and you can see over here is that little boat. So I did all those edits in Lightroom and it doesn't see them. That could be a problem. If you do extensive editing in Lightroom and then send the image here to convert it to black and white and do some more editing here, you won't see what you did. When it's done here and it comes back into Lightroom, it, they'll plop those Lightroom edits on top of it. And that might be an issue if you did things here that maybe conflict with edits, the edits you did in Lightroom. So that could be a problem. And just let me show you a little more. I'm gonna add a filter. And I'm going to add, of course, the black and white filter because we're converting to black and white. And if you add the black and white filter, you'll have a black and white mix down here. I'm going to make the yellows brighter, make the greens brighter. I'm going to bring aqua down and blues down to make the sky darker. I'm going to add another filter. And this time I'm going to add a dynamic contrast filter. And you'll notice now it's global. It's affecting everywhere. So I'm just going to prove it. See, it's affecting every pixel. And I mentioned that, in my opinion, the advantage on one effects has over uh, Silver Effects Pro is that we have AI masking available here. So what I could do is click on this little mask icon, brings up the masking properties dialog. Here I'm going to go to mask AI, and I'm going to, you can see I could apply it just to the, the uh, grain elevator, flora, to the natural ground, to the water. I'm going to do it to the sky. I'll click there, and I want to make sure I'm painting in the adjustment. We're going to click Apply. And then you'll notice that the adjustment is now only on the sky. Okay, so we'll tone it down just a little bit. All right, for the sake of argument, let's just say I'm done. Okay, so we're going to click the little blue check mark, and it's going to bring us back into Lightroom. And I mentioned the edits we did in Lightroom now are just going to get plopped on top of this. You'll notice that that little boat will be cropped away and it will be, in this case, it probably will look okay, but you definitely might have an issue if you did more edits than I did in Lightroom. All I did in Lightroom was I cropped away this little boat and I moved four sliders. If you do a lot more editing here, uh, this could be an issue. Also, I want to point out, if you look at the color image and then you go back to the black and white image. You could see how the uh, color image and black and white image are kind of, um, there's no lens corrections done. If you go to the lens corrections tab, you could see that I have everything clicked, but it doesn't find the lens profile. Whereas with the color image, it found everything. So when we sent the DNG to on one effects, and it doesn't matter if you use the standalone version of on one effects or if you use it in the suite, it's going to lose, somehow, it's going to lose your lens profile. And you're, you'd have to drill down and try to find it. This was, you know, a Sigma lens. And then, you know, it's, you know, it's not even listed. So there, there could be an issue, right? So um, let's take that off. So there could be a problem, obviously. Also, there's another issue. Let's say I decide I want to re-edit something that I did in on one effects. So I would again go up to file plugin extras and then I would go down to on one effects 2024 and I would in this case go to the DNG again. I can't do the original, so it's either a copy with Lightroom adjustments or just a copy and obviously if I do that it's not going to show the editing I did in on one effects meaning the black and white conversion I did and the dynamic contrast I did. It's all clear over here. 
So there is an issue. This probably, and this is probably the first time I've ever said this, it's probably not a good thing to try to keep your raw workflow uh, all the way through, or the raw format through all the way through your workflow in this instance. So the way I recommend using on one effects as a Lightroom plugin is to use that smart photo PSD option. And let me show you that. I'm going to get rid of this image. And if you want to just do a very fast delete to delete the image from Lightroom and from your hard drive is hold shift option command and then hit delete on a Mac. That is shift alt control backspace on a PC. And you'll just immediately delete the image from Lightroom and it will uh, be in the trash. So I have this image again. I did some editing in Lightroom. I did a slight crop and I did this uh, basic editing where I moved four sliders. I want to send it into On One Effects. I'm going to go up to File, Plugin Extras. And again, you could use either the standalone version or you could use it in the suite. I'll just use standalone version again. Go to On One Effects. But this time, I'm going to use a Smart Photo PSD. I'll go again to the Pro Photo RGB and click OK. Now, I'm going to do the same thing over there. But you'll notice that my edits that I did in Lightroom are seen in on one effects. And you can see the edits are here. The boat on the left-hand side is gone. It's cropped away. So I have an edited image. So I will add a filter. I will add that black and white filter again. Um, again, I'll do something similar here. Keep it that in, then we'll bring this down. Bring this down, make the sky darker. And then I'm going to add a filter, and it's going to be dynamic contrast. And I want to apply it just to the sky. We're going to paint it in. We're going to click apply. We'll get rid of the masking properties. We don't need to see it. And we'll crank that up, make the sky more dramatic. Then we're going to click the little check mark. We're done. And it's going to bring us back, of course, to Lightroom. And it's going to look exactly like it looked in on one effects because it had all our edits there to begin with and let it do its thing. So it's here and you can see, and you'll notice that it's not like getting the barrel bulge in the middle because the lens corrections are there. So that's another advantage of using the smart photo PSD option. And probably the, the biggest advantage of using that option is I could go back in and re-edit something. So if I go up to file, and down to plugin extras, and then again go to On One Effects 2024. You can see the open original option is active. And then if I go there, you'll see that the two filters I added are here. The dynamic contrast filter is here, and the edits I did to it are here. And the black and white filter is here, and the edits I did to it are there. So I could come back in and re edit something. Um, so that is available. I'm just going to X out of this. So that is probably the first time I've ever recommended that you not try to keep the raw format throughout your workflow. The PSD option, although not probably as good as a raw file, you know, maybe doesn't offer all the dynamic range, uh, it is almost as good as a raw file. So I think it um, works. Let's do another one just so I could just again show you what I would do. Um, first, I like to crop. And this is crooked, very crooked. So I'm going to straighten it. I think that looks okay. Then we're going to go to the basic tab and I'm going to pull highlights down, open up shadows. And then I'm going to get my white point and move this to the right and this to the left as I did before. I think that looks pretty good. It still looks kind of crooked, doesn't it? Yeah, maybe it's just my eyes. Okay, at this point, I'm just going to make sure that lens corrections are built in because this was a Nikon Z6, which is a mirrorless camera. So I'm good to go. Now I'm just going to send it into On One Effects. I'm going to go up to File, Plug in Extras, and then down to On One Effects 2024. Again, I could use the, I'll do it for this, you know, just sake of completeness. I'll use On One Effects 2024 that's in the suite on One Photo Raw 2024 Max going to edit a copy with Lightroom Adjustments, Smart Photo PSD. I'm going to use Photo RGB, 16 bits, 300 is good. We'll click OK. Now again, as before, we'll open this image up into On One Effects. 
And here, I'm just going to do something similar uh, to it. Let it do its thing, though, once it opens. So you can see all my edits are here. I'm going to add a filter. I'm going to add this black and white filter. And again, um, I'm going to go to the mix first. And I'm going to make the yellows brighter, greens darker. Bring aqua down, blue down quite a bit. Uh, see if red does anything. Yeah, red's affecting the grass a little bit. So we'll go with that. Then I'm going to add a filter. It's going to be dynamic contrast, but another way I could apply it just to the sky is right here. I could just click on this radio button for sky and see how it puts this blue overlay on the sky. And then we'll go to dynamic contrast and it will then automatically be masked just to affect the sky. And you can see that as I just crank it, it's only affecting the sky. Like that. That. That looks good. Now I could add another filter. And this filter, I want to uh, just hit the natural ground. And we're going to go to sharpening, I think. Just right here. And I prefer to use the unsharp mask. Take the threshold down. I'm going to pull halo up. So I'm just sharpening the grass like this. And then you could do this in Lightroom if you prefer, or you could do it here. Um, I'm going to just add a vignette. And now I'm going to try the strong vignette. That's too strong. Big Softy is even stronger. But I'll use Big Softy and I'll just kind of back it off from the middle a little bit. Maybe I'll try that strong and just back it off from the middle. So there I've added uh, four different filters in on one effects uh there are several to choose from you could see here but there are a lot of filters to choose from and of course um ai masking is available for all of them so you're able to apply a filter to a very specific element in a scene also there's just manual masking as well you could go over and grab a masking brush and just start painting where you want the um adjustment to be applied to as well so you have those options We'll click the blue check mark and we'll return to Lightroom. And here, of course, I could do editing again here if I wanted to. So I could do editing here if I want to. But that's it. So I think I found a new application for my black and white editing, and that is On One Effects. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.